Hello everybody and welcome back to another quick Dwarf Fortress tutorial. In this video I want to talk about traffic zones. That's this button right here, found by the hotkey capital T. Traffic zones are a simple tool that people seem to think is way more complicated than it actually is. A lot of people also appear to think it does things that it doesn't actually do. I'll explain. Traffic zones allows you to set priority routes for your dwarves. Essentially, if the dwarves have the option, they will take that route instead of a different route. I'm going to use this kind of central area of my fortress subtle scribe as an example. Now, what it doesn't do is it doesn't stop dwarves from moving through a particular area. If there is a space for them to move through that area, let's just say a walkway, they will use that if there is something blocking their path. Or if they are in a situation of extreme duress and really need to get somewhere quickly, they will also cut across these forbidden zones. Essentially, this isn't a red light, green light situation. They operate as a suggestion more than a actual guarantee that your dwarves are going to walk in a particular direction or another. However, we can tweak these a little bit. By default, it's got a resistance of 25. We can, of course, crank this number up. As you can see, the defaults are set one, two, five, and 25. Meaning, if you use this tool, by all accounts, they will prioritize that direction. This is the default, so that's, this is what everything is set to all the time, and then this is kind of your slightly less likely to go that way. If we really want to crank this number up, we'll give it 50. So my goal is to stop them from using these entryways. So I'm going to select the restricted tool. I'm gonna to restrict this area and this area, and then I'm going to unpause and see what that does. Now, as you can see, the dwarves that were initially already pathing through this area are still using it. And then after a couple of seconds, we end up with these much more open areas, except for this dwarf who's uh, hauling something heavy and didn't realize that I changed the rules on him. But aside from military who completely ignore these, everybody else appears to be operating as we wanted. Now let's change things up a little bit. So I'm going to go back into this tool. I'm going to select the normal zone. So we've selected the normal traffic. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the rules slightly. We're going to click on this button. I always think that these are buttons and try and click on them, which always messes me up. And we're going to do a restricted line, a restricted line, and a priority line. Whoops. And then a priority line down the middle. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set these areas to lower priority, but still allow them to go through these ways, and then set this up to high priority. So essentially, if they're trying to path in and out, they will do their damnedest to go this way, and when walking down this way, they will take a straight line. Let's see what this does. As I unpause the game, it'll take a few seconds, but you're going to start seeing the dwarves prioritize the areas that we want them to, and walk down the middle of that walkway. Let's actually remove the overlay so it's a little bit clearer. As you can see, they are now walking this way. This is causing dwarves to have to climb over top of each other, which is slightly less than ideal, but the result is dwarves are not using these ins and outs as often. Now, there's many different reasons why you would want to use these tools. Maybe you are building in an area that's rather dangerous and you don't really want dwarves walking too close to a thing. Perhaps there's some hostile entities that get mad if you get too close to them, but it doesn't really matter that they're there because they're not like inherently hostile. You could use these setups to remove some of that hostile threat while not actually changing the layout of your fortress too much or enacting a burrow. It's also a really good way to stop dwarves from walking through water, such as like a water going over a waterfall. As an example, when water goes over a waterfall, it actually gets very shallow as it falls over the edge. Sometimes dwarves think, oh, it's only three deep out of seven because seven means it's too deep and they'll drown and one is like ankle deep. So right at the top of the waterfall, it can get very shallow. If you plop some of these red boys down here along the base of the waterfall, it is significantly less likely that your dwarves will walk through it thinking, ah, I will take the bridge instead. These are some tools and hopefully suggestions that will make these systems a little bit easier. I have some elephants to tend to, and I hope to see you in the next tutorial.